All right, welcome back. Here's another episode of Emotional Nightmares. I am your host. My name is Tyler. I'm your co-host. My name is Nicole. Bear with us as we only have two microphones, so we're going to spin this one around a little bit. Um, on today's episode, we're going to dive deep into the different forms of abuse, um, kind of what the premise of this podcast is all about. Uh, we have a special guest today. Her name is Rebecca, and she's going to kind of walk us through the different forms of abuse that she has gone through in her personal life, um, and we're going to kind of go from there. So with that being said, um, uh, Rebecca, if you want to kind of start us off, tell us where you want to go with this. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm Becca. I'm 32. Um, I have... Had a lot of different things happen throughout my life, but it started out kind of primed from a very young age to feel like I needed to earn love, that I wasn't good enough, um, that I was never just validated for who I was. I, I always had to do something better. And that definitely carried through um, throughout all of my relationships. I was cheated on by just about everybody I've ever dated. So going up through Post-college, um, I was around 25, it was 2015, 2016, and I found myself in a very abusive relationship very easily, very quickly. Um, and it really showed to me that you can end up in that kind of situation so fast before you even know what you're getting into. Like, all of a sudden, it's really bad. Um, and then getting yourself back out of that so, is hard. <laughs> so when you were in it, Right, because if if we're starting with a um, a physical abuse, right? So obviously it probably started off good in the beginning, yeah. right? I, I don't know if it was ever really that good. Honestly, it started out verbally. Okay. okay. So I dated this guy I met online, and I was heavy. I was depressed. I was in the, one of the worst places I've ever been in mentally, and he really echoed that to me. He re echoed all of the things that I already thought about myself. So. And you thought, let me date him. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I, I just, somebody was choosing me. That was my only criteria. I did not question beyond that of like, do I want this person? No, he wanted me. And then he didn't actually, because <laughs> he was embarrassed to tell his parents about me because I was fat. Or he wouldn't go down on me because I had a belly. Or if I lost, just lost 40 pounds, you know, he would propose or take me seriously. Just those kinds of things in the beginning, and I just rationalized them because, once again, somebody was finally choosing me. And so you, so when that when those were going going on, to you that was already normal behavior. Like you already thought that was normal in the sense of, you know, if somebody because you know the average person that's listening, right. like we all know different, but the average person that's listening is like, well geez, if I'm dating somebody and they're like, oh, you know, lose some weight or you're fat or this, you're going to say, oh, I'm out. Right. You know what I mean? I think it starts in kind of insidious ways and it doesn't start out just blatantly like that. Like, it'll be a hidden compliment kind of thing. Like, oh, you're so beautiful and you're just everything I've ever wanted. And if you would just lose those 40 pounds and okay. then we would be great, you know. Or, you know, I'd be so excited to introduce you to my family if you just, you know, wore a little bit nicer clothing or, you know, did your hair a little bit or took care of yourself a little better. And in the guise of bettering you or in the guise of uh, because I care so much. Right. And these were things that you were already telling yourself. Exactly. Like, yeah. I would be more beautiful, actually, yes. if I, I know did I'm lose that 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. I know I'm gross. I know I'm heavy. Like, thank you yes. for telling me that I'm not crazy for thinking this. Yeah. And so, like, you just took this as support and guidance. Mm -hmm. I remember having a smoke break outside of my job at the time, and I asked one of the girls, and I was like, what would you do if your, if your boyfriend told you that he didn't want to have sex with you with the lights on or he wanted to keep your shirt on because he didn't like how you looked? She's like, oh, how do I be out of there so fast? But that was happening to me at the time, and I was trying to figure out how I felt about it. But I stayed. Right. And I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm and gross. how old were you? I think I was like 25. Yeah. 24, 25 at the time. 
Um, but I was like, yeah, I am gross. Like, I'm glad he's being truthful with me and not just, like... Finally, getting, someone I can yeah, trust. Yeah, and not just giving yeah. me some, like, oh, you're beautiful, baby, and you're the boot. And I was like, no, I know I'm fat. I know I'm disgusting. I know I don't take care of myself. Like, at least he's being honest, and he still wants to be with me. I, I have... I can identify. I have totally felt this way. Sorry, Tyler. Um, you know, like I, <laughs> I, I remember meeting the guy that I was in an abusive relationship with and he definitely figured out where I was several yeah. counties away. And it was definitely creepy. And people were like, I think he's stalking you. And I was like, no, he's not. <laughs> he cares about me so much that yeah. he found where I'm at. And like, you didn't do that for me. When you're so. starving for that. Yeah. yeah. You can overlook almost anything. I oh, mean, yeah. They can spin it. You can spin it. When you're so starved for that love and you don't feel like you deserve it and that's all you've ever wanted yeah. was somebody to finally pick you, you can overlook a lot. Yeah. So now comes the physical. Yeah. So this entire relationship was like three months long. It was very, very short. At some point, um, I realized it was really a bad situation I watched him, he brought some man home from the bar one night and they were gonna wrestle or something, MMA stuff. <laughs> okay. And he almost killed this man. Oh, like the man shit himself. Oh, because he beat him so badly. I thought I was going to need to call the police. And you know, other things had been building up and then at that point just witnessing that and being frozen still sitting on the couch like, what do I do? I realized, like, this guy's dangerous, and I'm going to have to be careful about how I get out. I really thought that this was going a different direction when you were like, he brought a guy home and yeah. he was going to wrestle. I was like, well, I mean, good for him. I'm happy that he's open to <laughs> I mean, those I think things. that was part of it, too, but I went to sleep. I wasn't interested. Right. Um, but, yeah, that woke me up, and I don't know what the whole thing there was, but it was, it was a terrifying situation. It was not fun, exciting wrestling. It no. was, let's see how we can do it. It was like wrestling smash your face off of the stove by your hair right like, i mean that's naturally not, that's yeah, not that's sparring really doesn't have to, I, yeah. I know i mean that's i'm not, not sparring not like but mma spa no i think if i was a man i would totally think that way. absolutely <laughs> exactly. so um he didn't want me taking psych meds at the time and i was on several and for some reason that was just incredibly shameful for him that the person he was dating would be on psych meds so I pretended to get off of them. I didn't. I took them still. Pretended to get off of them. Good for you. Good for you. Take the meds. Do the therapy. And I kind of played up and pretended I was a little more unhinged than I already was. Hoping that that would be his choice to leave. And he'd be like, nah, I'm out. Like, and then that would lower the risk. Didn't work. But it was a solid plan. Like, It was a right. solid thought plan for what I thought I could do. Because I didn't feel strong enough to just kick this man to the curb. And at that point, he had, like, moved all his stuff into my apartment in the middle of the day while I was at work. And he got rid of his apartment, and I didn't even know. And this was three months. Yeah. So when I did ask him to leave and say, I don't, I don't like this, he had nowhere to go. So then it was, oh, you're going to put me out on the street? I'm in my broken car, and I don't have a license, and I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> so like so what do you do? Me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, do you do? to have someone just so willing to throw their entire life away for me and move in, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been in distress my whole right? life. So I had noticed some weird things, like my cats had started acting really strange. My very, very friendly cats um, that were more like dogs were, were very weird. Um, one actually peed himself while he was walking towards him, and I, you know, red flags went up. Um, you yeah, always trust the animals. Yeah. Always. And I didn't. And I feel I regret it so much. Like, I don't want to know what they went through because I came home one day with one of my cats with extreme injuries. Yeah. Um, what a piece of shit. And just immediately I knew. And there was like chemicals by the water bowl. I wasn't cleaning. He sure so wasn't cleaning. He was playing right. video games because he didn't even work. He was just chilling in my apartment. Yeah. But... He got me out of the house until like 11 o'clock that night. So I, when I did come home and I couldn't find her, that's how I found her. And I took her to the emergency vet and I tried to do the, I guess, safest route possible. Um, they asked me if I felt safe at home, like they do in doctor's offices, mm -hmm. because they knew by her injuries that there's nothing in my apartment that could have right. caused these injuries. They were human right. inflicted. Um, so I told them no and I started crying. 
So they called the cops. They had the cops come in from the back so that he didn't see them. And we came up with a game plan. And we, I got my cousin to come. It's like 45 minutes away. She drove, stayed in the parking lot so she could follow us home. Your vet's office? Yeah, I was just thinking oh, that. Like, it was good the emergency for them. vet. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Good for them for Shout recognizing. Out to them, yeah. mm -hmm. They we, went above and beyond. So that, you know, the vets are amazing because, like, most people don't realize, like, children in youth services mm -hmm. was even, and the only reason why they're a thing is because of animal abuse, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's always amazing to hear. Like, unfortunately, we live in a world where the people that are looking out for animals are better trained than, like, the people at the hospitals or something oh, like yeah. that. Like, they're, you yeah. know, so shout out for them for definitely um, oh, recognizing that. Oh, my that. God, they yeah. Saw it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's very impressive that yeah. they saw, like, hey, something's not right. Like, let's get you out of this. Yeah. So. I mean, honestly, like, after, I, after we met originally, right, I started studying ethnology and dog behavior and animal science. And I honestly, truly believe that that made me better at my real job, you yeah. know? And so... You trust the animals yeah, they're incredible absolutely so now you're out yeah that one ended badly <laughs> <laughs> so that night the cops had escorted him out um we kind of had this whole plan thing i drove home pretending like i didn't know he did that and oh she might have gotten into some chemicals or something um and then like a week later he broke in um and he kicked my entire door down it wasn't just like kicking the door in it was the entire frame came down and I had one of those sticks against the door. I had dead bolts. I had everything because I was scared of him. He had called me like 72 times that day, hmm. leaving these unhinged voicemails. Um, so he did end up attempting to take my life. Um, and my cat had been home from the emergency vet for a few days. She was in a dog crate next to me, and um, she was just bouncing. She was terrified. And I feel like that's my clearest memory is like, oh. I feel bad for what she had to go through versus empathy for myself. But I ended up in the hospital that night. He ended up in prison. Did I have PTSD from it? Yes. Years later, I found that I had a brain injury from it as well, from lack of oxygen. Um, but it took a long time to sort out the memories from that night sure. and what exactly happened and when. Um, but I do know I had some freaking awesome neighbors that called the cops and came and covered me up because I was bleeding and he had ripped my shirt open and they came and covered me up with some napkins from like fast food place. I baked them cookies and I left them cookies. <laughs> I, like, they saved me for sure. Um, Can I tell you just like how grateful I feel for your situation? Because there are hundreds of thousands of females where even with that situation, mm -hmm. the police don't or can't help mm -hmm. or they don't or can't get yes. out, they don't or can't get their animals and children out. And so the fact that you were so fortunate. Yeah, like, I really absolutely. was. And, you know, the police that I dealt with that night were amazing. They treated me so well. They were so kind to me. I was worried about my cats. Were you in Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. I was a little bit about two hours south, but I, I was worried about my cats because the door was down. True. Right. So... I had the paramedics searching for my cat. <laughs> Did they do it yeah. for you? Yeah. Yay! Yeah, yeah, Shout out good. paramedics yeah, too. They found yeah. my, like real shy when she was hiding. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean it was a really awful, awful experience, but it's something I've worked through. There was a lot of like, I guess PTSD in a physical sense. Like of I couldn't, Absolutely. I haven't been able to wear necklaces. Um, anything that like touched my throat, I would cut the, my shirts so nothing would touch my throat for a long time. Um, but that's really been the main consequence from that, that it has repeated over time. Unfortunately, like, there are other situations that have had more long-lasting effects on me than sure. that had. And let's go there, <laughs> right? So, so we get out of that, right? So Get out of that. Um, Where are you now? Are you, are you same still place. Same area? Same okay. place. A few months later, I got back on the dating apps, and I was even in a worse mental state than I was before. This had just happened. Absolutely. My sure. grandparents died. My lease was coming up. I had nowhere to go. Um, didn't know where I wanted to be, what I was doing. Um, what made you think, huh, dating app? Craving, just that deep-seated craving for someone 
that cared about me, you yeah. know, that picked me, that I was that person's person. Um, validation, whatever it may be, I don't know. Did you have like this thought in your mind that if I found that one, if this person would accept me, then yeah. everything would be better? Yeah, I, like I envisioned me finding someone and then that making my life better, like that making my life go into the, the trajectory it was supposed to. Um, and that person was like the missing piece. So I was very susceptible to the next person that came and he approached me very differently. And I was trying to be careful. I'm like, okay, I'm watching out for this, this, and this now. So he showed up as this very shy, very insecure loner. All he did was play video games. Um, wasn't super attractive and that was like my thing. I was like, okay, so he's not gonna cheat on me because other girls aren't gonna want him. Like mm -hmm. this was my thought process. Like, okay, this is gonna be a safer bet for me. And he was, you know, really charming at first and there was not any major red flags until I moved in with him two months later when my lease ended. Um, which when was your lease not, ended, was yeah. he like, just move in with me? Yeah, Okay. pretty much. Because I didn't know where I was going, and he was an hour away, and it was like, am I going to move to your town? Am I staying near my family? Like, are we taking the next step in this? Because um, so you did. wanted to at yeah. that point? Yeah, And I felt like things were going really well. Um, because with very covert narcissists, they're able to show you that in the beginning. Like, they're able to show you that they are everything you want and make you feel safe. So I did, and that, that mask came off real fast. Um, I think it was probably in, within the first week that I started seeing some really um, alarming things. Like he was telling me what I could wear um, in the house when his friends came over. Like my shorts are too short. I couldn't post this picture on Facebook because you could tell I had boobs. Like, sorry, I'm a woman. We wouldn't want you <laughs> like, yeah. to do that. I'm not showing them, but, like, you could tell through my shirt that I had them. Rude. How um, dare you, honestly. Right? <laughs> um, just the most minuscule things, and I think that that is something that I have tried to express to women over the time. Like, these small things built up into such a huge issue. Absolutely. And I, that's how they get you there, because you, if it was so bad right from the beginning, you wouldn't stay. Nobody would ever be trapped in an abusive relationship if they were like that right from the beginning. Right. right. So small things started adding up. Work. Um, he was so insecure about anything. Anybody I talked to, what I wore to work, I had to take pictures of myself, like at the work parking lot with the store behind me and this many fingers up. Or, to show that you were doing what you were supposed yeah, to be doing. Yeah, because it was just constant. And I have never, I have never cheated in my life. I have never, like, that has always been done to me. Right. right. So, but oh, after a few years of this, like, I got to the point where I was panicking just being a few minutes late and feeling like I did something wrong. Like, I couldn't differentiate it anymore. Right. because I was walking on eggshells so much I never knew what was going to set them off. And it was temper tantrums, it was holes in the wall. Um, I was expected to work, come home, take care of everything in the house. He did absolutely nothing, just destroyed everything. Disgusting, absolutely disgusting habits. Um, but you're a woman, so Yeah, so I was supposed him, to come home fix and him. feed him. Right. And he literally wore a hole in the couch from where he sat all day because he didn't work. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, there was two long, hard years of that and just constant getting worse and worse, but I was getting used to it and used to it and I was dissociating and I was starting to self-medicate with food. Hmm. I've never been a substance person, but I was very much a food addict and I was binge eating just to get some kind of feeling out of something. Um, I mean, coming through my phone, coming through, he found ways to look at things on Facebook of what you've been looking at and liking that I didn't know existed and I still haven't been able to find to this day. I mean, he just, everything was suspicious and it was crazy making. I mean, gaslighting too. An yeah, extreme absolutely. degree. That's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. A lot of, you know, 
you're crazy for even doing this and so now you're believing it yeah right so so two long years yeah of this so the frustrating aspect of that is like if someone's saying these things to you they're accusing of you of these things and you're so frustrated because i can't prove myself any more innocent than i already am right the more you react the more they think that that's actually happening like the more you protest the more it's more likely that it is actually happening like it's just such a there is no there is no good way out of it there's no appeasing them like there's nothing i could do that could make the situation better um it got to kind of a more sinister level over time um when i was coming home from work like if i went to get in the shower i worked at a pet place like I was gross when I got home from work. Yeah. If I would go to get in the shower, he would come in and have to inspect me to make sure I wasn't recently used. Um, hmm. Like I was at work. You got the pictures while I was at work. You saw my time card at work. I stopped to get the food you wanted on the way home and got the receipt, but it took a few minutes longer than you thought it should have. So... I must have been getting fucked in the gas station bathroom. Like, it's wild. there is no, y you can't do anything with that. Like, there's just nothing you can do that makes it any better whatsoever. So at what point did you start where it was, okay, this is enough. This is crazy. And maybe I need to get out. It was unfortunately longer than it should have been, but I wasn't allowed to have friends. I wasn't allowed to see my family anymore. Um, it started out very innocently of just, oh, I really don't want to go to this function, you know, and then it just got worse and worse. So started isolating you. Yeah, okay. slowly, very slowly. Um, I wanted to have a friend at work, but she had a husband, so I couldn't go to her house. Oh, because well, I was going to go fuck her husband, Of course obviously. you would. I mean, that's so <laughs> natural. Yeah, that's, the craziest thing is, like, like, your story just mirrors so much of my own story that I'm like, well, naturally. Right? Like, <laughs> it's the, I mean, parkour jumping to the conclusions here. Like, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't even expect, I couldn't expect what would set him off because it was just the most insane conclusions to be reaching from something so innocent. Oh, my God, yeah. So... I was just on my toes constantly, but I did, I started a new job and I met this girl there and I, right from the beginning, I was like, she's cool. Like she's a little hippie chick like me. We started talking, we started to become friends. And I just started talking to her about my day to day. Like you would catching up with any coworker and she would stop and she'd be like, what the fuck? Like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? She's like, does that happen a lot? Like you have to take a picture for him? What? what? What's that feel like when people stop you and try to repro? Like, what is that feeling like for you? Yeah, that is my question. In the beginning, I didn't understand what she was so upset about. I'm like, oh yeah, that's do that's normal for me now. Like, like right. who cares if he wants a picture? Yeah. Like, so you started normalizing the behavior. Yeah. Because it was in my every day. I couldn't fight it every day and still survive and be okay. Got it. So. Here I am at, clocking in at work and taking a picture to send to him with this many fingers. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? That's not normal. That's not a normal relationship. <laughs> so she really, like, as I started talking to her about more things, she was really like, Becca, like, that's not, that's not how somebody should treat you. And you're worth so much more than that. So with that little tiny spark that she put back into me, because at that point, like, I was, I was so depressed that I was probably going to end it. Like, I was... I couldn't think for myself anymore. I couldn't trust my own opinion. I couldn't trust my own sense of time. Like yeah. he would convince me that I was like running 20 minutes later than I, and I'd have receipts, <laughs> but it's just, it's so insidious. Um, so she really, she really helped me out with that. She showed me a lot of the things that I had normalized to myself and just how messed up they were. And she, she threw out the word abuse. So during this process, right? Cause we're going to go to the average person, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a bunch of TV shows, and hopefully um, this episode people will be able to see and use this as a tool too, right? Um, I, I think of the movie, uh, what's the movie with Jennifer Lopez, where she beats the dude up. Enough, right? So 
um, you know, there's movies, there's these things, right? And the average person always says, you know, well, did you not think this was crazy? And when, why did you not just leave the first moment you realize, like, why am I taking pictures of my time clock? You know what I mean? Because it starts out smaller than that. Yeah. And it starts out so damn good. They know just how to make it so damn good. Like, this is my person. I finally found it. So, so that's important, right? And that, that's one of the, um, hopefully what we can manifest here, I guess would be the word yeah. where people can see is, um, where you're being conditioned yes. for this, right? Yeah. Like you're, you're being conditioned into this is normalized behavior. And as the behavior gets worse, you're just conditioned mm-hmm. already to, well, yeah, maybe I am wrong. Yeah. and everything right so then you're you're you feel like this all day long like you hate your life like you are just in an awful mental space all day you're long and you come home exactly and you come home and i would sit in my car and just i just did not want to go in the house like i just knew i had such a hard day and it was just going to get worse feeling. and i wrote a poem about it and shared it online and so many people resonated with it and like that hurts my heart that so many people know that feeling but it also makes me happy to share those things because in some ways they're silly like I was about to write a poem about how we had a big fight about what a wall sconce was called I said there was like spider webs and he's like it's a candelabra (laughs) no but that ended with holes in the walls because everything was that explosive well you can't be right yeah (laughs) god forbid I mean you can't even if you google it no that's wrong throw my phone break it like right it's just you can't and then and that's the gaslighting behavior right exactly because unfortunately you know we, we were talking about this and we don't have any of these episodes yet figured out where what number we're going to release them but on one of the episodes that we already recorded um we were talking about misused terminology mm-hmm. right yeah. and unfortunately gaslighting has become one of those terms where if i don't agree with you on something right. people are like oh they're gaslighting me and it's no there's a disagreement that's different right. Right. than what gaslighting truly is right, right? and like yeah. i mean you're doing a great job at I don't it, think it's identifying what it is you know what i mean gaslighting yeah. is not one instance gaslighting Absolutely is not. a pattern of behavior. it is an ongoing skin mm-hmm. that right. someone yes. puts you as the main character in their play that you yep. did not audition for yep right. Which exactly. you then become normal. Yeah. You normalize it. Right? Yeah, right. So, all right. So now we're normalizing. So girls giving you um, the spark right. of hope. Mm-hmm. Right. So now that we got the spark of hope of, all right, this shit ain't right. Um, what's the next move? So I kept kind of faltering and going back and forth with it because especially things with like sexual stuff like... I didn't even realize how bad it was at the time. I knew it was awful, but, you know, once again, I was in this awful cloud. Um, But it was like, oh, but we're together, and we're so it's not bad that I'm making you have sex with me or else I'm going to have a temper tantrum and put holes in the walls and sleep deprive you and not let you get any sleep tonight. Which is not okay, right? Like, that's rape. Right. Which I, I literally did not put that word to it for almost six months of therapy afterwards. Right. And this happened every day. And I want to talk about your therapy because you had mentioned that to yeah. me on, in a text message, which I think, again, like I'm very, like I don't know you, but I'm extremely proud of you for doing the therapy that you that. are doing. Because yeah. um, it's rare that people stick to that, right? Because yeah. it's so intensive. Um, and I'm, I'm a big advocate for that but anyway well, it's so intensive then as soon as anybody gets a good feeling they kind of turn yeah. the therapist into the the other side of a fuckboy relationship and right. they don't hit him back until they're like i got sad yeah you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's really good that that you're doing that um and and i definitely want to dive deep into that so but that's important right is because i don't think a lot of people understand that yeah um is male or female, whatever it is, if you're in a relationship, that doesn't mean you have free use 
exactly. of the other person's Unless that's your body. thing. I mean, I, like, uh, you can have that as your thing. All right, yeah. We're not can, against your will. We're not hitting sure, exactly. sure, 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 <laughs> sure. If, exactly. if that's your thing. But that's, again, no, that's not really, that's still consensual, right? right? Because exactly. that's what your, ever your thing is that you guys have agreed upon. But, like, I know, like, it wouldn't be, like, it's not okay for me, right? Like, if I say, if I say to my girlfriend, we're going to have sex, and she says, no, I'm not feeling it tonight, and I go out and I just, you know, Throw it. flip the fucking yeah, fr it. refrigerator yeah. over yeah. and kick the door and stuff like that. That's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And hope, and, you know, she, she, would have, she would have enough common courtesy to get up and leave, um, as would, you know, that's what normal people right. would do. However... It's important to understand that you're being conditioned. Exactly. Right? You're being conditioned to this right. is normal that, behavior. That was my theme of life was internalizing. Yeah. So you're at fault, right? So yeah. I'm at fault if I don't do what you want and, like, get, maybe I am the problem, right? And it's a survival thing. It's dissociation. Yeah. I'm shoving my face with food. I'm scrolling endlessly on Facebook so that right. I can stop listening to him screaming his conspiracy theories at me 24-7. Like, nothing I can do is right in any sense of the word in any aspect of life. I can't choose the music. I can't choose what we're watching. Like, nothing. So, I'm dissociated. Like, yeah. I'm just in a shell trying to get by. Um, and that's I, where I went to sexually as well. What I think about, like, when I think about what we have to do with disassociation and the way that we end up falling into as women or as... I think maybe just any human in those situations is like, have you ever seen the movie, um, is it Get Out or Just Out, where they're like, it's taking over people's minds. Anyways, he's being hypnotized, but it's like not good, right? They're right. Take his brain and he falls back into the darkness and he's like free falling into mm -hmm. outer space, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is... You hear the things around you, but you don't yes. belong to the things around you, and they don't hit you. Mm -hmm. the and it's it's really just like yep. outer space. It is without a tether. Yep, just yeah, it is. I agree with that. And you're, I mean, you just add to it all the other things that are going on at the time, and just your self esteem's low. I was physically ill from the stress, the cortisol of this relationship. Like, yeah, I put on so much weight around my stomach. I didn't cook anymore because I couldn't do anything right. Um, I stopped going in the kitchen at all because he would leave like moldy food everywhere. But it was my job to clean it up. And at that point, I was like, "F this! This is stupid! I'm not doing that." So I gained a bunch of weight from the fast food, you know, but yeah. it was just finding any way to get through the, to the next day. Sure. Um, but that does take a physical toll. Absolutely. Um, I was having autoimmune issues. I thought I was having like gynecological issues. I went to three different doctors and I'm like, why does this hurt so badly? It feels like I'm being split open by razor blades. There was nothing wrong with me. It was psychosomatic. Because in my head, I hated that it was happening. Yeah. I didn't want it to happen. I was thinking in my head, like, oh my God, he's so gross. It's disgusting. Like, just in this whole other world of disgust. So then your body right. you know, sure. tries to body protect you in that way. I mean, right. I'm so appreciative that you talk about that because there's so many people that have those feelings mm -hmm. and they're like, the doctors aren't helping me. They're telling me there's nothing wrong with me and they're lying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the, again, the disassociation right. and the things that we've normalized, right? We can't trust anybody. Everybody's gaslighting us, so it must not be yep. truthful, you know? It, they must not be taking care of me. But, like, the real results of what mm -hmm. the stress hormones mm -hmm. and a negative environment can do to you yep. are so for real. They are. They re it's scary. And, I mean, add to that a layer of because it was so painful to me, that now became a point of contention. That now became a point of abuse because I didn't want it even more. And I would have to physically recoil because that's, that is some otherworldly pain and I could not continue. Even if I was shutting it all out, I could not. So now it's even worse because now he's not getting it every day and now there's more holes in the walls and now there's more sleep. I mean, it's just, it never ends. It just compiles and compiles. So now we got hope. Yes. Right? I'm going to take got us that back. that little, little spark. <laughs> All right. So we got a little spark. All right. So 
with the little spark, what is what is the point of I'm out? His family, his grandmother. I was just about Good to ask you, her. where his mama at? Because I would have called his mom. <laughs> The amount of times they live nearby, the amount of times that I ran to their house sobbing. And what did they have to say? House. I mean, they were comfort, you know, they would try to comfort me, but like, it's their kid. Yeah. Like, they would say that that's not okay, but like, what more could they do? We're adults. So, but she really, they sat me down and it, they said, Becca, like, you, you deserve so much better than this. And like, this is not okay. This is, this is insane. And, Good for grandma. We can see how they were like. We can see how when the light that you had when you moved here, you don't have that anymore. Mm. So between them, who I really trusted and I really loved, and my friend, it was just like, okay, it's time to do something about this because it's one or the other. Like, good for you. I'm gone by my own hand, or I get the hell out of here. Right. Because he never hit me. And that was something he said all the time was like, I'm not hitting you. This isn't, you know, like, why are you being so dramatic? It's not this bad. Like, it's not that bad. Everybody has their issues. Everybody yeah. has their How trauma. dare you get upset for him? Exactly. Which Repeatedly is also, doing SA, you know? Yeah. Like, how dare you? Yeah. Which is also the best point. Yeah. Right? Is just, you know, I, you know, I, I, cause I do counseling for a living and like, you know, like I have to explain to people all the time is like, They'll say that. Mm -hmm. Though you know, that's always the number one thing is he doesn't hit yes, me. but it, I'm not getting hit, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, true, you're not getting hit. However, it is still the same kind of abuse, because like I don't know about you personally. Um, I'll take physical abuse any day over yeah, it been emotional been what I was and mental. With, like. You know what I mean? <laughs> mental and emotional abuse, like eh. I'll take the physical, mm -hmm. right? I um, realized that a long time ago. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that became that. that became normal, like, And that's the way it's done, right? Like, is it normalized right. for us? You yes. know what so, to expect? It's something and done. Like, the depths of depravity that the other stuff can get to. Yeah. So, you got out. So, did you come back here? I did. Um, that was, like, my biggest mark of failure. I, I did not like growing up here. Um, well, it I had a very hard time. I was bullied. <laughs> yeah, I was bullied very badly. Um, my family relationship wasn't that great. So that was my ultimate mark of failure was at 29 years old, ending up in my parents' basement with my seven pets. But I made the decision. They, they got a U-Haul and they Sounds came like and got me within success. like... Yeah. Within like four days, they had me out of there. And I left, I left everything. I left the things that I had gotten from my grandparents when they died. I left them. He'd ruined most of it anyways. He bore a hole in the couch. The pans. I wasn't digging through an entire Where's your animals? moldy pans. What happened to the animals? I let, a few of them were left there. Um, some of the reptiles we had, but I brought the rest with me. Um, so it was me in the basement with seven animals. Is that so, one I met you? Yeah, it is. Yeah! It is. So, <clears throat> I'm like a literal hole in the couch. Like I'm just trying like to a, picture like... A dip, like straight up divot. I like how I moved on with you because I'm like naturally, of course, that's good. I totally you just flip the flip the cushion every now and again, yeah. you know, and like he's yeah, like, coming back to it. Yeah, because like that's not normal for me. Right. right? Yeah. It's like, you know, because um, also at the end of the day, too, I'm not a woman. Right. So like I'm not all of this is like, you know, that. is different. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm not going to have the same perspective as you guys do. Um, I mean, I think it's really important to also mark that like men are equally getting abused. Yeah, sure, and sure, that sure. Is happening. So like, but I get what you're saying. Like, I can identify a lot with mm -hmm. like emotional abuse, and I can identify a lot with mental abuse and disassociate. And, and like when you were um, mentioning, you know, pull up in it, pull up to the house and just sit in the car. Um, you yeah. know, I was in a relationship one time, um, terrible, right? And and it was that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I would pull up and be like, fuck, I don't want to get out of the car and go in. Because I was excited to go to work. And then I would be like, fuck, work I got to. extra hours, go the long way. Yeah. Now I'm like, shit, work's done. I got to go home. And, like, and, I mean, it wasn't nearly as bad, right? But it was still, um, 
I was still experiencing those things yeah, as a male, like you do. So like we won't take away from that, but forget about that because like from the female's perspective, like hopefully this episode helps females as much. Um, I'm sure males will watch it, but females, I, I, I'm hoping that they take away from it. So I find like, that like even like the silly weird things, like the candelabra thing, or like yeah, that he could never be out of his special alkaline water or something like that. Like people will hear that and they're like, oh, you know, my boyfriend or my husband does weird stuff like that too, like really crazy overreactions. Just and then they start piecing the puzzle pieces together. That's kind of where it started with me too. It was like. Oh, this stuff that was normalized for me every day, and somebody was like, "Wait, what? Nah, that's not cool." Yeah. Well, so if somebody can like, so oh, I hey. think it only takes one person. Yeah, I've said that a hundred times. It only I, takes one. I think yeah. it's very hard though, too, right? Because there are mental health disorders. Yes. Right. Yes. So I think it's hard too, because like, um, you're gonna have a form of bipolar. You can have a form of autism. Even you can have a form of many different things where it's the overreaction to yes. certain things happens, but it doesn't necessarily mean... And I think those were at play, too. Right. So, yeah. so you got both spectrums, yeah. right? Yeah. So I want... Because that's important, too, because I don't, I don't want people to watch this and then be like, let me start dissecting my relationship, right? Because... Right? Um, yeah, maybe they should, though. <laughs> I mean, they should, but at the same time, though, too, um, not everybody's crazy, right? right yeah. So, like, yeah. and, and I don't, I don't want to use the term crazy either because I, I hate that. Not but everybody is malevolent. malevolent. Right, right, yeah. right. And the intent like, behind it. Mm -hmm. Right, because, like, I know um, sometimes you can have overreactions mm -hmm. to certain things due to sensory issues, due to many different forms, right? So it is hard, it is. right? So, like... That's the other side of this, too, is identifying emotional abuse and mental abuse is the hardest thing to do. In fact, when I worked at CYS, um, you, can't, you can't prove it, right? Yeah. And, like, we would get people and be like, yo, this is emotional abuse. And it was like, okay, get a doctor to say it. And no doctor would do it right. because no. it was they have to put their reputation on the and line. they got to go to court. And they got to prepare for that. they got to miss other appointments. It's a lot for, you know, yeah. it's very overwhelming. Well, aside, system aside, that's already broken. Aside from that, the big thing is is they have to put, they it, it, you can't identify it, yeah, right? right, because of the mental health issues. So um, when piecing this stuff together, that's the hard thing. Now, obviously, you know, if, I'm if, if you're constantly overreacting, breaking shit, throwing stuff through walls, um, that's not okay. That's not normal. Right. Right. And right. I think that maybe those things were at the base of things. And I'm like, I wasn't entirely innocent either. I was depressed. I was having. Sure. You know, those and at some that. points I definitely got back into reactive abuse because towards the end when I was like, I'm getting out of this, this is hell, I'd be screaming back. Right. I pushed him back one time, well, and I still feel guilt over that. Of all the things that have happened to me, right? I shoved right. someone. So, so at the same time, like, don't don't blame yourself. Yeah. Right. Let's not go back into blaming ourselves for issues. Right. Right. Um, How dare you defend yourself? Yeah. Like, I mean, but that's, that's a common response. Oh though. my gosh! Yeah, yeah, because that's what but, he's going to talk about for the next couple. Sure, she pushed yeah. me, and and that's a common response, yeah. right? Because like, if somebody pushes me, my first reaction is I'm push you back. Like, yeah. why are you pushing me? Right. As a matter of fact, it's kind of. I think I feel like we learned that in kindergarten. Right. right? Younger, probably younger. Yeah, longer. like we learned that. Like this kid hit me, I hit you back. Yeah. You know. Um. So. You know, I don't want to take away from that. I don't want you to blame yourself for yeah. that. Like, that's, it is what it is. Right? I just think it's a, it's an added layer that, yes, those things are there, but does it excuse the behavior? Right. No. Right. Does not excuse the behavior. Does it explain? Behavior. Maybe. Nothing. There's, there's absolutely nothing that is okay about the sex abuse. Right. right? right. Like, there's nothing okay with that whatsoever. Um, most of the people that are going to watch this are, I, I don't know how to word it, but they themselves 
are either people who have experienced it yeah. or feel that rapists and pedophiles should be shot in the head, which I don't blame them, right? right. And I don't even know if we could say that on YouTube. But we might have to take that out. No. <laughs> we're not monetized yet, so we're good, right? This will probably be the first episode we drop, so it'll be fine. I think it should be, yeah. Um, so, I'm going to take this off. We're just going to go. Okay. So, where are we? We're losing track. Um, she got out. She moved to her mom's house. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're at mom's house. We're in the basement. She got most of her animals right? out because she a true G. Yep. So, I met her. Now. She's a wonderful human. Yeah, I found a really cool therapist that does EMDR therapy. Boom, perfect. Yeah. All right, so now, go ahead. I mean, Talk I've had mental that. health issues my whole life. I'd been in therapy on and off since I was a little kid. It never, it always made it worse for me, honestly. Talk therapy, going in, how do you feel? Right. There was never any solution, and I would just leave feeling worse than when I came mm. in. It would just bring it all up, you know? So, coming back, obviously, I knew I needed to untangle some of that. Um, I didn't know at that time how much. I didn't consider that sexual abuse at the time. Like, I knew it was awful, but we were in a relationship. Right. Um, so all those things, like, there's so many things that even now I'm unraveling, and I'm like, ooh, that's not, no. Like, that's not w what happens in a healthy relationship. Because of things just got so turned around for me. So EMDR has been just a lifesaver, an absolute lifesaver for me. Um, it has made connections. I have a lot of repressed memories. It has made a lot of connections to other events. Um, yeah, we were just talking yeah. about that before we started recording about yeah. how like it is so difficult to remember mm -hmm. even looking at pictures. It is so difficult to remember yeah. periods of time because of all the abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Growing up in like with a narcissistic household, like I was shutting down for a long, long time. Like dissociation was already a thing I was doing, so. I was finding, you know, I'd start, we'd talk about this specific memory with the relationship, and then it would bounce to here, and then it would bounce to here. And I'm like, why is my brain bouncing all over the place? Like, these are not related. And she's like, yeah, how did you feel at that moment? Mm. And my brain was taking me to every single time that I had felt that same feeling. Mm. So I just did a painting called um, Attachment Hunger or it's also called abandonment melange. Um, it's that hunger for attachment. It's not healthy attachment. It's, you know, why I chose those people and why I clung to them. Um, but it's just like basically my little inner child and me hanging out at the bottom of my stomach in the dark because mm -hmm. that's what it feels like. I want to know about like what made you choose, I mean, because your art is beautiful and so unique. And I just think that it, it what the content that you were attempting to reach, right. I think you hit it when I see your art, you know? Yeah. And so like what made you want to pick art or do art as like, I would imagine that you're using this as your coping skill, your yeah. self-care. I think that that is essentially it. It's something I, I liked that I had foregone. I didn't have anything I did for fun anymore because I couldn't. There was no room for that in my life. So as I was kind of like untangling things, I needed a way to put it all out. I started art journaling. And I just have journal after journal full of everything, song lyrics, quotes that I would find, things I would remember, doodles, whatever. Um, just needed some place to put it. And so that's why sharing a lot of it has also been helpful because I'm taking the notes out of my phone, the poems that I've written in the notes app, you know, and I'm putting them out there and people are getting something from it. Nice. So it's a really, it's cathartic. <clears throat> it's a release of that, honestly. Yeah. So it was just, yeah, it's a coping mechanism, finding myself again or for the first time, really. Yeah. Honestly. Right. I, I like that. So yeah. let me yeah. ask you this. How does... So obviously you're going through this therapy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very intensive. I'm, I'm, again, can't say enough good about it. How does, in your everyday life, how do these things come back to you? Two-part question. How do these things come back to you, right? Like the trauma mm -hmm. responses, the like, eh, is this fucking person serious mm -hmm. or what? How does that happen? And then how do you... How do you, I guess, react in a different way? So, coping skill. I wanted to put it like you said in a text message, LMAO, 
and I kind of reacted to that and I was like, it's not funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and I didn't actually think you were thinking it was funny, but in the last few months, I'm 32 years old and I just found out I don't know how to feel anger. I, it, I was never allowed to show that because my reaction to the abuse became the problem. So I shut down any strong reactions. Hmm. So if something makes me angry or if somebody does something that should make me angry, my brain like switches and it like skips right to like self pity and like depression and putting it on myself. So recently I've been realizing that I need to swing the extreme opposite until I can find a balance hmm. because I don't speak up ever. And I don't speak up in relationship. I don't speak up outside of relationship in business in family. I just don't. So that was kind of me putting that into practice. And I was like, Oh, I kind of feel bad, <laughs> but that's just it. I feel bad. I feel bad. Anything I say that might displease somebody and people please their tendencies is what got me here. So then, so now do you think you're on the other side where you're overly trying to stand up for yourself I'd in like ways to that be. you're like, yeah, maybe this wasn't the spot. I'd like to be. Honestly, I'd kind of like to get there because I'm still kind of playing out the same old relationship patterns. I'm just, mm. they're getting better each time. I'm noticing the things earlier, um, but ultimately it is kind of the same, same cycle that I still haven't broken yet. Um, people that are emotionally unavailable and can't actually love me. I have to work for that love and I, I have just to prove myself and yeah. I have to, you know, put anything of mine aside. My needs don't matter. Um, and not even that they're really asking me to do that all the time. I do it automatically. How do you think it affects your friendships? I have just recently started building friendships. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I was a loner. Most of my life I was bullied really badly. Um, it's not really something I've explored yet, but it's something that is definitely related. Um, feeling ostracized. We just started something with that in EMDR um, about being like excluded or seen for not actually me, like people lying about me and then other people believing that and how that's just, that makes me frantic. That's such a mm -hmm. frantic feeling in my body. Mm -hmm. um, like, no, I need to prove myself. I need to prove myself, right. but you can't prove yourself. Right. Right. So that's definitely something I still struggle with that I'm starting to work on. But I have been really um, focusing on friendships more so than dating. Um, Which is good. Yeah, yeah, and building some things. I, you know, I slept back here and there, did, did a few dating things that that just it ended up being that same pattern in a prettier package. Yeah. I was just going to ask you if you've dated since then, yeah. and are you using dating apps to date still or? <laughs> I mean, I'm interested. No, I mean, I'm, right? yeah, I was going to go to that too. But. I am. I am. I know. Um, I like to think I'm a little more conscious about it now. Um, mm -hmm. I know what a lot of red flags are and what I'm looking for and what I'm not. Unfortunately, once I do get to that attachment stage, that goes out the window. And I've done that now three times. Um, where like there was little red flags there, but I was like, okay, this might be workable. I'm, you know, I'm keeping my cool. I'm keeping my cool. And then as soon as they decide they want me, I'm like, all right, all in, yeah. all in, here's all of me. And it's somebody that can't handle all of me. It's somebody that hasn't done the same amount of emotional work that I have or hasn't self explored, you know, and yeah. to even be able to handle their own stuff, let yeah. alone add on mine. Right. And all of mine at that. Yeah. self like, Yeah. Like, that's the most important thing is, you know, because if somebody's not willing to explore themselves, like, we all struggle. Like, everybody yeah. goes through mental problems. We all go through emotional breakdowns. Right. Um, Tis is the human experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's even, that's why this is even a thing. Why we even, why I even started this thing was uh, an emotional breakdown. Yeah. So, um you know we all experience it but the thing is is like the people we just did an episode again i don't even know the numbers uh we just did an episode though on red flags where we were like you oh, know yeah. where we were talking about um they're not technically real but they're real right, oh, right? Yeah. and like one of the things that you know is important to understand too i think for the for the listener is the people that are not willing to self-explore, yep. that's kind of a problem, mm. right? It's a huge how problem. can you grow? Yeah. The whole, I think the whole 
point of life and like hopefully even with this is like growing yeah. like you yeah. you can't get out of those patterns and you can't you can you're going to continue going down the same road because you know the old saying if nothing changes nothing, nothing changes, changes. I mean, it's so but real. if you never it's so if you never attempt to change yeah. you're never going to have anything change it's easy to sit back and say everything's great when things are going the way i want them to go in life mm -hmm. yeah. um but if we don't take a step back and say well when shit doesn't go the way right. i want how am i going to react then we're going to get lost and you know, being the muster trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I've never heard that before. I'm sorry. That's so cute. I'm such a so, sucker for dad jokes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, man, I, I think, um, I, it's awesome, man. I'm, 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 I appreciate it. I think it's yeah. awesome that you're doing the work that you're doing. Yeah. I appreciate you know? it. I'm definitely getting to a point where like, I know myself not more now at 30, like I just dyed my hair for the first time in 10 years. I'm like, I love it. It looks great. I you buy new clothes. I lost a hundred pounds. I'm like, I'm so I am finding you. me. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I ever had me. I remember Even as a little tiny kid, I didn't have me. That's awesome. So I'm finding it now. When I first met you, it was because you had like a picture of your lizard on um, the internet. Yeah. And my son, my autistic son just really wanted a lizard and you allowed us like as like basically strangers. <laughs> like I just followed you on Facebook because I thought you were absolutely beautiful and wonderful. Um, and you just like invited us to your house and you gave him that experience and you were just, I mean, and your dad too was, mm -hmm. I met yeah. him and enjoyed him and, and your house and your home was just absolutely beautiful and then to just watch you now like and to experience your friendship i mean such a beautiful person thank and you. i appreciate it i'm happy that you exist thank you you're welcome. i absolutely agree i think i think you are a wonderful person you have a business i do what is it um tails and scales pet care i'm a pet sitter been working with animals for like 15 years now so. and a dog walker yeah and a dog walker yeah, so dog you drop in for... visits and dog walks yeah. you have tiktok I do. What is it? Um, Bex Marie Love. We'll tag you. Yeah. In the comments <laughs> and things. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we will do that. But I'm saying it so that yeah. in case they want to know more about you, um, maybe hear more of your story. Because I imagine on TikTok you're going a little bit deeper than what. I mean, obviously we're we're not going to go deep, deep. But I, mean, right. I think we went pretty deep. And I try to share um, it in a little bit of a creative way for myself too. So absolutely. just yeah, poetry or job. whatever. I, th I mean, I think art is um, underappreciated. Art is the best form of expression. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people sit back and say, well, I can't draw. You don't have to. No. Just grab something and just anything Throw can some be. Throw paint on the wall. <laughs> I, I use cooking, right? Because I okay. think, I think cooking go. is art to me, is like trying to find something to take a bunch of shit and make it taste amazing to me is a form of art, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, Teach me. I had that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm his house for dinner. It's yeah. hot. So. <laughs> You know, I think that's everything. But um, no, man. So I, I listen. I greatly appreciate you coming. Yeah. I, I greatly appreciate you um, sitting down and talking with us, and you know, allowing your story to be told. And I hope that people are able to get that from you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Like for me, sharing my stuff is. I mean, it's cathartic and helpful for me as well. But the amount of people who have resonated and have told me, like sent me messages and being like, I, I felt like you were telling my story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart, but it also makes me feel like maybe we can find somebody when they're at stage two instead of stage five to get out. Like I was sure when they recognize that because they hear other people talking about it and how it gets so much worse from there, it's not going to stop there. Mm -hmm. Right. And then maybe they can get out before the damage is too, too, too. Maybe you found a new career path for advocacy. Maybe. We'll have to explore that. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a great career path for advocacy. <laughs> um, but no, man, I greatly appreciate. So I think, you know, um, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. And I think... Um, check out her TikTok. Yeah, let, check out yeah. her TikTok. Those of you that are in our local area... You know, if you need animals sitting, um, yeah, you know where to go. Licensed and insured. Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. So like it, share it, subscribe to it. Um, 
most importantly, you know, come tell your story. That's the whole premise of this. So if you yourself want to advocate for something, um, some kind of cause, something, whatever it is, man, I want to hear your story. I want to know. I want to know the human experience. Why do we think the way we think? Why do we go through what we go through when we don't have to? Um, let's help each other. Yeah. Um, I want to hear from the other side, too. I want to hear from people that work in the system and do all the things. I want to hear both sides. Get them out. Yeah. Yeah, I want to, I want to hear it all. Um, the voice for the voiceless. That's, that's the whole platform here. So, um, you Love know, that. hit Love us it. up. Message us. Um, links are in the thing. And that's it. Keep happy hour happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching.